my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Now we are in the second Sunday of the series of main theme, Stir into flame the gift of God by practicing the virtue of prudence. And also this Sunday, we mark Catechetical Sunday, an opportunity to celebrate, pray for, and bless those men and women who use their time, their talent, and their love to teach the faith. Not only the catechists that parents are truly the primary catechists of their children. They prepare the soil and plant the first seeds of faith at home. On Catechetical Sunday, we not only highlight the work of catechists in parishes and schools, but we also commend parents and guardians and encourage them to take seriously their role of making their Catholic households a place where faith is passed on to the next generation. Today's reading Simon reminds us that we are God's stewards and that God expects faithful and prudent stewardship from us. They challenge us to use our God-given talents and blessings wisely to attain heavenly bliss. The prophet Amos in the first reading reminds the Israelites and us to be faithful to our covenant with Yahweh by practicing justice and mercy as God's faithful stewards. He wants us against having the making of money as the goal of our life, whatever the means. The second reading, 1 Timothy instructs the first century judeo christians to become true stewards of the gospel of Jesus, the only mediator between God and man, by preaching the good news to the pagans and including them in intercessory prayers. And today's gospel challenges to use our blessings prudently, time, talent, health, and wealth, wisely and diligently, so that they will serve for our good in eternity. We are on the right road only if we use our earthly wealth to attain our heavenly goal. Really, the, what is the lessons and essence of today's parable? Firstly, let the children of light acquire the prudence of the children of this world. The steward in the parable was a dishonest man who had been put in charge of his master's estate. When God red handed for misappropriation of profits, the steward cleverly falsified in the entries in the account books so that in the debtors appeared to owe far less than their actual debt. The steward knew that when his master fired him, he would need friends. His dishonest plan would serve two purposes. First, the debtors would be grateful to him and would support him financially. Secondly, he would be in a position to exercise a little judicious blackmail to silence them. The children of this world are the children of darkness who see and value only the things of this world. The Christian believers, however, are the children of light who see real, eternal, uh, spiritual values as primary and regard temporal values as secondary. The children of this world regard themselves as owners, while true Christians regard themselves as mere stewards of God who view their resources as merely loaned to them by God. To the Christian, riches mean spiritual and human values. Our stewardship requires us to use our advantages to help others. The parable points out that Christians should be as prudent and resourceful in acquiring goodness as the steward was in acquiring money and making his future safe. Christians must give as much attention to things that concern their souls as they do to the things that concern worldly matters. In other words, our Christianity will begin to be real and effective when we spend as much time 
and effort on spiritual matters as we do on worldly activities and when the church uses the worldly business sense of a good steward in conducting its ministries. Secondly, invest temporal goods to acquire eternal welfare. Jesus reminds us that earthly resources will eventually run out. Hence, our material possession should be used for the good of others to cement friendships wherein lie the real and permanent values of life. This can be done in two ways. One in regard to eternity, secondly in regard to this world. Firstly, in regard to the eternity, a man's true wealth consists not in what he owned, but in what he gave away. The right use of wealth according to Jesus in the Gospel of Luke is to help the poor, the hungry, and the starving. That is the way that we make friends with the God and please God according to this test. There are many people in our parish who live a life of generosity. There are many people in the Catholic Church who understand that God has given us money so that we can be generous to the needy, the poor and the starving. Thus, many of us are making wise investments for the future Secondly, in regard to this world, a man can use his wealth not only to make life easier for himself, but also for his fellow men. Perhaps he will fund scholarships for students or give to charitable organizations and missionary endeavors. There are a million possibilities in front of us. Thirdly, integrity and fidelity are the true the yardsticks for promotion and eternal reward. A man's way of fulfilling a small task is the best proof of his fitness or unfitness to be entrusted with a large task. No man will be advanced to a higher office until he has given proof of his honesty and ability in a lower position. Jesus extends this principle to eternity. He calls us to faithfulness in little things because most of our life is made up of seemingly small opportunity to do well. Then our Lord will welcome us with the words, Well done, my good and a faithful servant. Since you are faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come share your master's joy. Fourthly, no servant can serve two masters. Jesus reminds us that, like slaves, we cannot serve God and mammon or wealth on a part-time basis. Once a man chooses to serve God, every moment of his time and every atom of his energy belong to God only. God is the most exclusive of masters. We belong to him either totally or not at all. As Christians, we are called to serve God first. We must not use money and possessions exclusively to serve our own purposes. Let us remember the proverb, money can buy everything and it can purchase a ticket to every place except to heaven. This parable of serving two masters may seem ironic. Perhaps Jesus was attacking the Sadducees and Pharisees. The Sadducees cheated a bit on the Messiah law so that they might accommodate themselves to the Roman government. The Pharisees made a big show of giving small amounts of money to the poor. The lesson is that we cannot be nominal Christians, a calling ourselves Christians and committing little wrongs while expecting God's praise. What will be in the real life message behind of today's reflection? Firstly, we need to be faithful in little things of our life. Often we get so caught up in our work that we ignore the little things of our life. As St. John Chrysostom said, 
Faithfulness in little things is a big thing. We may not be able to reach millions of people all over the world by satellite as famous talk show hosts do. But in our own part of the world, we can faithfully do little things to point people toward God. Our future opportunities in the eternal service of God largely depend on our stewardship in handling the little opportunities we have had on earth. If we practice the virtue of prudence in our life, we could do a lot. As Saint Teresa of Calcutta used to recommend, do little things with great love. Secondly, we need to act wisely, trusting in the power and assistance of God. The today's parable gives us some practical advice. We are urged to stride into the future with the confidence and prudence, not in ourselves or our abilities, but with the power and the grace of God. The manager in Jesus' story used all his responses to secure his future. We must be no less resourceful. At our disposal, we have hope in God's justice, faith in God's assistance, and trust in God's grace. We have the Holy Mass and the seven sacraments as sources of divine grace. The Holy Bible as the word of God for daily meditation and practice and the spirit guided church to direct us by which let us stir into flame the gift of God. These are the best possible resources. We need to use them in such a way that it will be said to us. And the master commanded them because they acted so wisely. Thirdly, we need to be prepared to give an account of our life. We are all stewards of what God has entrusted to us. So someday we will have to give him an account of our stewardship. We prepare ourselves for all kinds of things, most of which never happen. But do we care enough for our souls to ensure ourselves against the one thing that most certainly will happen? We must meet God and give an account. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each one may receive recompense according to what he did in the body, whether good or evil. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. Thus the only thing that will count in our favor is the testimony of those who will say, The Lord, when I was really in need, he gave to me at cost to himself. He helped me along, he showed love to me, and proved it by giving himself to me. Once again, let us tear into the gift of God and remember that. The Catechetical Sunday is a wonderful opportunity to reflect on the role that each person plays by virtue of baptism in handling on the faith and being a witness to the gospel. Catechetical Sunday is an opportunity for all to rededicate themselves to this mission as a community of faith. As St. Matthew says, chapter 10, 16, Behold, I sent you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be you therefore prudent as serpents and innocent as dove. God bless you.